What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I bring you another special one. Today is the Sunday Stock Watch. This is where I talk about all the stocks that I like, all the stocks that I don't like, all the things that are going on, you know, on the economic calendar, you know, all the earnings going on. We do have a few notable names that we'll talk about, of course. Uh, but yeah, now we're going into a full week of trading. Last week we had one last day, so you know, the volume was a little less than usual. But before we go ahead and start this video, hit that like button. I'll wait for you to do that. Subscribe, I'll wait for you to do that. Comment down below what other stocks you're looking at for this week. Just because I'm looking at, you know, these five stocks or six stocks doesn't mean that's the only thing going on in the market. Uh, and let me know what other, you know, videos you would like to see on this channel. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So the first thing I'm going to notice is, uh, you know, we have a few people speaking this week. You know, we have James speaking Monday, Charles speaking Tuesday, uh, Thursday we have a few people speaking. Uh, with 20 year bond auction on Wednesday, that's usually important. It's during the day, too. Uh, Thursday, uh, we, you know, we don't have any. Oh, we have the Fed balance sheet at 4 30, which is normal, and then we have jobless claims at 8 30 a.m. That'll be important, and yeah, I don't see Powell speaking. I thought Powell was speaking Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, but I guess it's not showing here so. Let's go ahead and look at earnings for this week. The first thing I'm going to notice is Bank of America, Charles Schwab. Um, you know, we have a few different banks here that most of us don't really know. Uh, but Bank of America is a big one. We had a few banks report last week as well. Netflix, IBM, Johnson & Johnson, Interactive Broker. Actually, nobody cares about Interactive Broker except us who trade on it. Um, Tesla. On Wednesday, we have United, which is actually important. It's a uh, you know, uh, you know, one of the uh, the f what do they call it? One of the uh, aircrafts or air companies reporting. I can't believe I have a brain freeze right now. Anyways, Lamb Research reporting, which is very important. They're a big chip. Uh, you know, someone you, like when I when people talk about chip companies. The top three or top two, at least for me, is Lamb Research and Micron. Yes, NVIDIA is big, but these give you the insight of what's coming, what's going on, what's going wrong, so that when NVIDIA comes around, you kind of have an idea of what's really going on back there. So, Lamb Research is a very important one. Nobody really talks about it, though. Uh, Whirlpool is reporting, CSX, American Airlines, another one of the airlines. Wow, airlines. There we go. That was the word I was looking for. Brain freeze, because I just recorded a TikTok. AT&T is reporting, Snap Inc. is reporting, uh, where are we looking here? I think that's about it for what I care for, at least, I mean, Verizon, but not really a fan, you know, I'm not really going to follow it. Let's go ahead and start this video with, you know, with our watch list here. We have the 179 I'm looking at on Airbnb, this is the first thing I'm watching. We are a little far, this is Airbnb, this, ain't, this is not a Tesla, so... This doesn't move all types of crazy. So we are about nine, ten dollars away. So the first thing I'm watching on Airbnb is 179. If we can break 179, we do need to break 180 and we need to hold above 180. If we can do that, this has room up to 185, 186 area. And from there, this can actually squeeze because we've been stuck here and we've been rejected at 179 multiple, multiple times. So the next thing I'm watching on uh, you know, this watch list is Amazon. Amazon if you put this on the 30 minute, and let me, actually I like the one hour better. The one hour has a downtrend. We keep touching the bottom, bouncing up, touching the bottom, bouncing up here. I'm watching this 29.92. We've been ha we've been having weak sentiment in the market as far as SPY and NQ or QQQ, whatever you guys feel comfortable watching. Uh, but I am watching this downside just in case we come through, we take out that 3000 level and hold below. 29.92, this wick when we touched it did not close under 3,000. So that's gonna be the first thing I pay attention. Can that one hour candle close below 3,000? The next thing I'm watching is Google. I haven't talked about this one in a while, but look at this. It's holding this level that we bounced off before. Uh, this is 29.30, 29.34, but I'm gonna be watching 29.30. If we can break through that, we have room to around 2,500. So watching Google for sure, any of this little downtrend going on, like Amazon so they're both comparable as of right now but Google was actually holding up uh, before this this was holding up around 2800 2850 level but it couldn't get past that 2875 that was actually the level I was watching for the upside but it never came NVIDIA 
same thing going on like I said we have weak mark sent market sentiments so you're gonna see a lot of these stocks kind of doing the same thing so watching the video bounce off this trend bounce off this trend bounce off this trend bounce off this trend multiple times here we are holding this 210 level if we break 210 I have room down to 208 207 area uh, it did bounce off this a while ago right here it, it loves bouncing uh, off this level you can say this fell bounced off 208 this bounced off that 207, 208, 207 level three, four times here. So watching this, if we can break 210, that's cool and all, but we still need to break 208 and hold under, just like that Amazon trade I was watching, and that's on the one hour and four hour. So keep an eye on NVIDIA. That's a really big one. This could fall down to 200, and we can actually break 200 this week if things get crazy here. Tesla, um, let me put this on the 30-minute. This 30-minute, forget about everything else here clear drawing set as you can see on this 30 minute trend we have this uptrend going on it's kind of holding well it's doing a little thing you know things different than Amazon the video Google all the stocks that I've been watching so technically it is holding up but this trend is kind of saving its life here one two three you know if you count after hours four times here so we're gonna watch this if we can break to the downside here on this downtrend I'm watching this 973 level and then this 962 level to the downside of 950 so just keep an eye. I mean, it's holding up pretty well, so nothing to be rushed here. Apple, for the small accounts that like trading options, this is something to watch here. On the one hour, we have this downtrend again. Weak mark sentiment. Most things are going to look alike. One, two bounces here. We got this bounce off of 164, 165-ish. I'm watching for the break of 165. We have room down to 162.50, then 161.89 on this trend. So keep an eye on Apple. It's really good. Contracts are cheap. Um, and the stock actually moves and does pay well on the option side of things. So Shopify is another one. When stocks announce split, right, it's supposed to be a positive reaction, right? For example, Tesla announced a split. What happened to that stock? Doubled, tripled. Amazon announced that split. It bounced off news maybe like $700 within a week or two. You guys can go back to the chart. Uh, next thing, uh, what else announced the split? Uh, that was really nice. I'm, I'm trying to think of the best. NVIDIA. NVIDIA had a nice run. NVIDIA was actually a clean one. And then Shopify announces its split. It does nothing. It actually goes down here and it can't hold 4% on Friday. Or Thursday, the last day of the trading week last week. Doesn't make any sense. Now, in my head, if a split which you would use as a catalyst or a positive catalyst can't move the stock what is unless it has some extraordinary uh you know news that comes out or or you know some earnings but we're still not at earnings levels uh, earnings date yet we probably have like a week or two left and then other than that it really has no positive flow coming in right if if it can't move off that 10 to 1 split this thing is weak. So I'm watching this to the downside. Now, I'm actually thinking about taking a long position here. Uh, you know, two months out, three months out, or maybe two months, two months. Shot to the downside, maybe those 500 puts two months out. I got to see how much they cost, but the stock doesn't look too hot. I'm watching this to the downside under 575. This has room down to 550. From 550, this has room down to 525, then 510. So watching Shopify, but... The stock doesn't look good, and you gotta remember this stock used to be at 1700, and they just announced a split. If they announced a split at 1700, it would have made more sense. But they're announcing a split at 580 dollars, meaning this stock's gonna be 58 bucks if it's split right now, obviously. But it's not going to. By the time this splits, it's gonna be at 400, 500 dollars, 50 bucks stock. Nobody's gonna care about shop as far as you know trading it, actively trading it. It already has low, uh, you know, low. Uh, you know liquidity in its contracts and in the stock so it's not just the option side of Shopify the, the stock itself has low low liquidity compared to like Tesla Amazon and the stocks that we love to trade so we'll see how this goes but in my eyes Shopify isn't something that uh, is gonna be bouncing anytime soon so I'll see you guys on the next episode hope you like you guys enjoy kill it this week good luck